Hello and welcome back to Pancast. In today's episode, we will discuss Prisma SD-WAN and specifically the device registration and claiming process. We have Suman with us who will tell us more. Before we get started, Suman, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Thank you, John, for having me on this Pancast today. My name is Suman and I have been working in the tech support of Palo Alto Networks, specializing in SASE and Prisma sd product solutions. Today, I am very excited to talk about the Prisma sd device registration and claiming process. It's a complex backend operation. However, it appears very simple for the end customer, providing a good customer experience. So, let's get started. When an instant on network or ion device is purchased, and before shipping to an end customer, a device-specific manufacturer install certificate or make is installed on the device at the manufacturer floor and registered to the customer. The uniqueness of the make is based on the device's serial number. Currently, the device is either unclaimed or untrusted with no ability to join a customer network. Once the device is received at the customer location, installed and powered on, the device will reach out to the cloud controller over any available internet connection. The device and controller will mutually authenticate and establish a TLS 1.2 session using the install MIC. At this point, the device is in an effective quarantine state in that it has no ability to receive policy information from the controller, communicate with other ion devices on the network, or make any policy decisions. The device will show up in an unclaimed inventory list for the customer on the controller. At this point, the customer can claim the device via the controller's UI. When claiming the device, the controller will generate a unique device ID for the device, generate a device specific customer install certificate or kick, and register the unique device ID and kick in the controller. The kick is transmitted to the device over the existing TLS 1.2 session, which is then reestablished between the device and controller using the newly installed kick. Till now, the device is not yet participating in the network. In order to complete the operation, Policies need to be attached to the device via site binding and any relevant device specific configurations need to be configured on the device via the controller's UI. Once the device configuration and policy assignment is complete, the device will establish VPN tunnels to other ion devices and can start data forwarding as per defined policies. The validity periods for both the MIC and KIC certificates are 10 years. All certificates are stored in an encrypted state at rest in the controller. Thanks, Suman. So it sounds like there are different connections between the ION device and the cloud controller. Can you tell us more about those? Sure, John. So the Prisma HD on ION device initiate for TLS 1.2 long-lived session to the controller for various services such as message routing layer or MRL, statistics, flows, logs, and remote access of the device toolkit. Let me explain the functionality of each of the session and their relevance. Message routing layer or MRL is used for all control messages between the controller and ION devices. What's that mean? If any config change is made on the controller UI, a unique ETEC value will generate and controller will push the new configuration along with the unique ETEC ID through this control channel. In this architecture, the controller is always the source of truth, hence all configuration has to make from the controller only. Logs. All system logs from the device to the controller are sent over logs channel for centralized troubleshooting or debugging. Stats for flows, flow records collected by the device are sent to the controller over this channel. Stats for metrics, all aggregated metrics are sent by the device to the controller over stats channel. And the last connection remote access is an on-demand TLS session for the remote CLA access from the UI of the controller. The connection is initiated through the MRL connection, hence MRL connection should remain up to get the remote CLA access via the UI of the controller. The customer can initiate and connect a maximum of 16 concurrent remote access with ION devices. ION manage all connections dynamically and any L3 interfaces are eligible to participate in these connections and the ION can initiate each session separately as far as DNS IP is configured on them. And what about the data security? Good question, John. The data security is a common concern for all customers. All data in transit is protected using SSL or TLS encryption. This includes API access from customer users to the Prisma sd controller, UI access from customer users to the Prisma sd controller, from ION devices to the Prisma sd controller, from services or pipelines within the Prisma sd controller to cloud storage, 
All data at rest in databases and cloud storage is encrypted. All Palo Alto Network's personal access to data is protected using SSL or TLS connection and authenticated using internal directory services, multi-factor authentication, and IAM authentication. Palo Alto Networks has achieved SOC 2 Type 1 certification for Prisma HD WAN. Furthermore, the services is hosted in SOC 2 Type 2 certified data centers. Good to know, Suman. So finally, what are the key takeaways for today? Yes, to summarize the takeaways are as follows. Devices visible in your inventory are available for you to claim and then assign to sites. The claim process authenticates and legitimizes the devices on each site. The device came online with enough knowledge to connect with the Prisma HD1 controller in the appropriate customer context and start forwarding flows. Prisma HD1 instant on network or ion devices in hardware and software form factors enable the integration of a diverse set of WAN connection types, improve application performance and visibility, enhance security and compliance, and reduce the overall cost and complexity of the customer's WAN, iron manage all controller connections dynamically, and all L3 interfaces are eligible to participate in this connection. The validity periods for the certificates are for 10 years for both the MEEK and KIC certificates. With these key points in mind, I wish you a pleasant journey with IONS complete claiming and registration lifecycle. Thanks so much, Suman. For our pancasters out there, you can find the transcript and some useful links on live.paloaltonetworks.com under pancast. Until next time.